this. So let us continue the same. Just remind you, when you read the page number 74, Tattva Swadhi, they said the influence of the Tattvas, Tattva means here five elements, earth element, water element, fire element, air element, and ether elements. If you read the Tattva Swadhi page number 74, you see the backside what they write. The influence of the Tattvas pervades, pervades means everywhere. Each of these lokas, except the last Satya Loka, the last Satya Loka, which beyond the influence of the Pancha Tattvas and Mahabhutas, it is important to realize that through Tattva Sudhi, the purification of Tattvas, Sadhana, we increase the awareness and purify the Tattvas in all dimensions of the existence. Do you understand this? What they mean? It means you must purify, means to clarify the Muladhara Chakra, which is related to earth element, Swadhisan Chakra, which is related related to water element, Manipuri chakra related to Agni Tattva, the fire element, Anaha chakra related to Vayu Tattva, the air element, then the fifth is a ether element, which is the Akas Tattva, the Bisuddhi. These five chakras is related to five Tattvas. And this five tattva, it has its own tanmatras. So, awakening kundalini, not necessarily you are reach the sahasra, not necessarily, because still you need to work. For example, you are awakening the Swadeshan chakra, still you need to work on Manipara chakra, Anaha chakra, Bisudhi chakra, and the Agya chakra and sahasra. But how to understand them? How you can purify them? So what is all about Tattva Sudhi? How we can do Tattva Sudhi Sadhana? The question comes, whatever I'm speaking to you, a lot of intellectual things. Okay, meditate and purify, but how? What are the implementations? How to apply? How to awaken and go to further? What is really Tattva Sadhana means you study every day, I speak, you study. What that means, these things. Then again, you have to focus. Again, Anamaya Kosha, the Pranamaya Kosha, Manamaya Kosha, Vigyanamaya Kosha, these courses need to be evolved. But what is there? What is there? They, it means you have to speak, you have to think about the, the Muladhara Chakras related to Anamaya Kosha, that word I have been speaking some days before. How to purify, how to detachment of your material obligations, of your creations, of your survivals. I give very simple examples, like animals or the birds. You take the birds, they have their net, they have their house, they will also work. They have their also families. Right? They have also family, they have their house and they work also. And you have your own family and also you work. What are the difference? Is there any difference? I don't see any difference. But difference is you can call your human being and you call them their birds. But both have the families. They have their wife, husband, children, and so on. Maybe some animals, they don't have a particular husband, <laughs> right? The chickens, for example, they don't have particular husbands. They only have the, the, the chickens, they have only children. <laughs> no husband, but still, 
the chickens they only work hard they survive their own families there are some birds they don't depend on the man at all they survive but today the women are depend the the pocket of the husband yeah the money of the husband the bank balance of the husband but if we check the animals <laughs> the birds they never think about their husband is very interesting isn't it but what is the difference today if you are a girl and you have a husband you have children so why not you live like animal like birds so i find out today the modern civilization in 21st century i think the women are more worst than the birds than the chickens like pigeons right peacocks pigeons and so on so i just give one example i'm i try to take you right perspectives about to survival what i mean why bring this topic about birds because the birds they have their nest their families and everything but what just check psychologically you will be check let me introspect the birds they never greedy for their survival no greediness at all the birds they have the house or their nests when a cyclone comes or the flood comes or tsunami comes they always change the place to another destinations they don't cry for it they don't suffering for it because they change their house or according to the environments according to the nature just think about it little bit just think you understand me like you know that many birds they always moving like migrants one place to another according to law of nature so what happens they live very peacefully they may be unconscious many things but according to our study they understand the law of nature so there is no place of uh, sufferings and miseries as we suffer as human being we are not only want to survive but we want our material comfortable lives without understanding law of nature so what we need to study as human being the law of nature that need to focus your earth element the water elements or the five chakras because five chakra all over the elements and these elements are functioning according to law of nature according to law of the creations the five element does not function as you wish as you want not function so this is the part of tattva sadhana to observe and introspect am i clear now i try to bring some practical application of the tattva suddhi tattva suddhi i mean tattva suddhi sadhana so therefore like lord buddha he was sitting on a tree for long long time why he could meditate in the cave he could meditate in the house he could meditate in the monastery he could meditate in his own palace the kingdom i'm just giving one example to you but why he left the palace why he was sitting on a tree throughout his enlightenment because one reason what reason because one reason and what the reason jenia now these are questions he he detached because of detachment or non attachment no that is not correct but anyway you have your answers simona now uh because it was apple tree <laughs> he was grabbing apples from the tree <laughs> no is the wrong answer linus I was looking for a, uh, enlightenment the wrong question so now let i will give the answers yoganand i had the same uh, answer as eugenia okay silvia um i would say because of the energy that is animating from the tree in the nature 
Right, you are close to answer. So the answer is very simple. When sitting on a tree, because we are meditating sitting on a tree, so what happening? You give an opportunity to yourself without any material comforts to understand the law of nature would happening. Because you open the eyes, you're sitting on a tree. Tree is a nature. So when you're sitting on a tree, you are studying every aspect of the nature moment to moment. It's not about detachment, not about enlightenment, nothing. But at the very beginning, you need to understand what the law of nature is happening. So Lord Buddha, by sitting on a tree, he studied the law of nature thoroughly. He studied nothing but five elements first. Thoroughly he studied. Because when he studies, therefore, the five chakras for you, when you practice Kundalini science or Kundalini Tantra or five Bhutas about Tattva Sudhi, you need to study properly the five elements. How the earth element happening? What is the, what is the effects of the earth elements? What are the effect of the water element? What are the effect of the fire element? What are the effect of the air element and the ether elements? So, Lord Buddha, the law of nature, the first, because you are part and parcel law of nature, your body, because your body is composed by five elements. Therefore, I say that Om Sariram. Like many people today, I'm giving one example to Jenya. Many people leave the home in Europe. Jenny also traveling in India, she so you know some people are many yogis, many yogis or many masters, many teachers, whatever, in European way. Sometimes they leave the home. They want to be spiritual, they're sitting. Maybe they have detachment that comes maybe due to reactions. Due to reaction, the detachment comes. Sometimes you are very angry with your husband, or with your partner, you start divorce sign the papers, or you have boyfriend, you separate, you just anger, and some due to some reactions happening. As you are a girl, maybe you walk with another man, your boyfriend is jealous, you say separate today. Why you walk with that another man? So simple, so detachment starts. So this is called reactions. So many people maybe renounce or detachment, but by reactions, but Lord Buddha, not he renounced everything because of reactions, no. He, have, he understood that. He was very happy with many things. He had a wife, he had children, he had the kingdom, he had money and honey and everything. You understand? Lord of Buddha, everything he had. He don't renounce and detest by reactions, no. But he was not happy, although he had everything in his life. And he was very young. He was very young. And he was achieving everything in his life. I think age of 32 or 28, he left the kingdom. He have everything. So he was renounced with the proper understandings, but renounce not enough for him to sitting on a tree because he was experienced everything materially in the palace, but he did not understand the law of nature because the palace, they're changing everything like your house in Europe. When snow comes, you are a central heating in the room. Huh? And you don't need cloth, you don't need nothing, you can sit down and you can sleep well. But in India, when you go mountain snow like Himalayas, you put so much blanket, sleeping bags, you know, so many things. So you don't understand the law of nature outside. Sometimes I know when I'm sleeping in the house in Europe, very much hot, I sometimes feel very much headaches. And when I stay in the house, I walk outside and come back home, I have super headaches most of the time in Europe, in especially winter. So because the law of nature is very much this unbalanced. And in India, I don't have any problems of headaches, never happens like this. Because I'm with nature. Cold is cold, hot is hot, warm is warm like this. So I don't use even heater systems. Even have the heater sometimes, maybe a little bit warm, but I keeping it. The all night cold, I can sleep. So what I mean, so Lord Buddha sitting on a tree because to understand, to study, the introspective, the law of nature. 
and not only that and when he renounced the kingdom he was monk but he used to begging the food he did not stay that time he had no monasteries he did not stay any monastery to educate himself no and that time it was not very popular many monastic system that time not very popular i don't know maybe that time is there any buddhist monastery i think no but somehow so lord buddha was used to begging the food in rural areas countryside he used to go for getting the begging the food he get some food and return to home and he returned home in stress so he tried to experience the rain the cold the wind and everything that is he, he had big research about this so therefore he say that everything is changing everything is anicca 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 he say everything changing every moments but how we can study this and you want to experience your life everything unchanged right even sometimes i make jokes sometimes but it's nice jokes so nice man they like to marry young girls why because the old women can't make the beautiful and can't make uh, enjoyment so much so many men sometimes they divorce their wife they marry new new one right so i'm just give one examples <laughs> even men don't accept unchanged or men the same also many old women they like to have young man you know it's vice versa when i going to 55 so you like to have 20 year the boy to have the marriage yeah so i'm this what i like to speak with everybody jokes it is all about to we don't accept the changes i'm just give one example we don't accept the changes we everything want to unchanged but not a possible law of nature law of nature is not possible but you have to accept nothing but changing so therefore how to experience this you can therefore as you are european and as this give live example and very i was saying very practical examples or practical uh eh, practical example many european when come to india because your life is different and our life is different so i can understand very clearly because i used to travel all over the world and most of the time three months or four months or six months i used to spend all over europe and i used to living very good life there as your life even i don't know you because i used to stay very rich rich families very rich family every city <clears throat> normally 90% i always stay in the rich families because poor family cannot invite me that is very normal because you understand me because poor people they have to hand to mouth so i need always rich people because they have to take care of my food sun as cloth maybe shoes maybe sleep many things they they need for me so in europe you are so much addiction of a workaholic workaholic understand many people are alcoholic but you are a workaholic especially germans are workaholic so germans always love to work all the time 24 hours so they are workaholic so sometimes when as a swami coming from india and going to germany you staying their house you don't work nothing their house so i simply stay there nice pizza and pasta i cook you know nice eating rooms and they provide me fax or phone mobile and everything whatever i need and same time i also as a poor swami i need some money for masram in himalaya so i tea sometimes some places so i need their house i need food i need money so some nice people are jealous they think this swami coming from india he's so young don't work nothing he give nice lectures he get money nice food nice you know he enjoying the nice cars and everything you know some nice even girls around me oh this swami is young he enjoying nice girls nice money nice house nice car many <laughs> the people from germany that jealous about me you know jealous i'm telling you very honestly so why workaholic so what i mean i try to bring the contest when the same germany people come to india they work so hard they live differently and they even my ashram when they come because our ashram is very much cold we have a common bathrooms not attached bathrooms and winters is very cold super cold and even sometimes it was time i have no heater to have boiled water and they are so discussing and they want to pay for that time 2 300 rupees i mean 3 or 4 euros 
and I said them to them, why not go to hotel and stay and pay 50 euro? So you get all comfortable lives. You get air condition and so on. So why you are discuss with me, you paying four euros and you expecting I have to provide air conditions, heaters, hot water, bathroom attachment and so on. Ma'am, you are in wrong place. You don't expect four euro. You pay me 50 euro, I can provide everything. So what I mean, we are so much addictions. We have so much addictions of our material comforts. But when you travel, outside we forget that we forget and i always say that look and i tell them you go to five star hotels pay more money and don't expect by four euro what you can get in four in a euro you get a mini cup of coffee i used to spend your hotels in five star hotels for 10 euros for one cup of tea i speak them you know five hotels in germany i went where i went one time to cup of tea I got five euros, 9.9 .9 euros, 9.40 euros per one cup of tea. Only hot water, one tea bag. It was Hotel Aravela, his biggest hotel, where the Saudi Arabia king used to come to stay that hotels. So I, out of my out of my madness, Swami Samarpan, I went that hotel to cup of tea. I pay 9.40 euros for one cup of tea. <laughs> of course, that was my first and last tea. I never went again. But I paid that my own bills, I remember today. So what I mean to you, I just want to tell you what the people material comforts. Because many things we don't like to change. And love nature is all about to change. So that you are going to study in Tattva Sudhi Sadhana, I bring into topics. I'm not making only jokes and uh, stories. So come to topic now. So I speak about five elements. So you must learn all the five chakras and accepting everything in your life, whatever comes as per the law of nature is decided. Many things happens in our life. We are very unhappy and suffering and miseries because we don't accept the law of nature. So therefore we must learn from the Lord Buddha. He was meditating on the tree because to learn the law of nature thoroughly. And he was master of the law of nature. So therefore he said that everything it changes in the life and everything, the emptiness, that's nothing is permanent in the world. Nothing is permanent. Anicca, 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 anicca. I don't know that Dhamma, maybe next time I can teach you the Pali language, Pali, the sutras. Well, Lord Buddha tried to speak about meditations. Maybe some time come, I can read the Pali without any problems. Lord Buddha, in ancient time, he was teaching the language, the local language, called Pali language, where he taught is uh, very close to Sanskrit, but not exactly Sanskrit, it's different. But almost the many words are involved in the Sanskrit words. Very beautiful language. That's called Anicca, Anicca, Anicca. Means changing and changing and changing. End of the day, he experienced in his life, everything changes. Everything is impermanent and that need to experience and accept exactly as it is, not what you like to be. And that is up. And this, what the experience that you can apply in Patanjali Yoga Sutras, Chitta, Vritti, Niradha. So here, yoga means to be aware, the modification of the mind the modification of the action and reaction of the mind, accept as it is, not what you like to be, accept as it is, what that, everything changes. Everything is impermanent, everything is impermanent. And that happening on your five chakras, Muladhar, Swadhisthana, Manipura, Anahat, and Bishwi chakras. And that once we are purified and accepting this five chakra, whatever happening, then you are going to again chakra where Shiva and Sakti is unite. And that is the dissolve. There you are experiencing a higher consciousness. You are experiencing the Jyoti, the form, the, the symbol of soul, the spirit. And that is what you are experiencing in Sanmati, Sanmukhi Mudras or the Jyoti Mudras. And that you can practice in Kriya Yoga. But be clear that 
what you are really going to experience in the five chakras. So that I'll explain tomorrow. Today is enough. Anyway, you know many things, but I am here to just simply remind you. Understand, you know many things. You can also reading books. But when I'm speaking with you, so at least I can bring the topics into your consciousness, how to apply practically day by day. That is also very important. So today we we'll learn the Sahasra Chakra. There is not influenced by any tattvas, no tattvas there. So once you reach or you develop the consciousness of the Sahasra Chakra, there you are going to experience of the freedom and love and peaceful. And that is the source of your final freedom. The source of your final freedom, the Sahasra. And whatever you're studying, all the chakras, even today, what you see that Biswa Sunya, Sunya Dharana, when you are going to experience or dissolve your mind into the totality of the consciousness of emptiness, so naturally you are going to experience the Supreme Consciousness of Shiva, the Vairava. And that consciousness of the Shiva leads you all the way in order to experience the final freedom, the final love, or and you are entered into the kingdom of the eternal peace and eternal happiness. So that is the way I try to conclude, but I have no time to read all kind of sutras today and you can leave it homework. And if you have any doubts, so tomorrow I'll remind you again. And before I conclude this section today and now, I would like to ask you, if you have anyone, any questions, please unmute yourself and ask me. Linus, I go one by one. Any questions? Yes, um, isn't... Um... Uh, working with tattvas, the five elements, is working with the chakras, is it not easier than working with the tattvas, focusing and working with the chakras? Actually, it's a very good question. I actually have to work simultaneously because every element, every tattva is also related to chakras, part and parcel. Chakras are all the subtlest part of the consciousness, but without understanding the gross elements, then we can't enter in the shortlist part of the our chakras to in order to awakening. So therefore, we need to understand and clarify the tattvas. Like we want to experience means we have to understand our physical body first, then observe first, introspect first, then we can go to subtle body. Then only we can understand and free from the all kind of stress and strain. So therefore, tattvas are also very important how is affecting our chakras. And although the tattvas are the gross elements, but without that also there is no possible to survive because these are the five elements for our body to survive. Because our body is composed by five elements. So without these elements, we will also die. So it's, everything is interdependence. Then we can talk about more. So, Yoganan. I have no question so far, but I think it's uh, meditate, meditate, meditate. That's what I hear uh, for, for all the days. To introspect. But even meditate, yeah, it's meditate also need introspections because meditate also is very important, but introspection are also very important. Like when do yoga nidra, you are going to each part of the body that is called introspection also, because each part you have introspect. What is happening? What is my knees, my hands? So this is called introspect. Similarly, you have to introspect on your also Gyanendriyas, Karmendriyas. What kind of action has to be done? What kind of thoughts I have? So Karmendra Gyanendra is also responsible about chakras too. And that need to also to purify means the clear thoughts. Gyanendra is helping to clear thoughts. You need to also introspect your thoughts. Your thoughts also need to be yeah. purified. That is common sense. Morals. 
And Jenny? Jenny? Yes, I have a question. Um, a couple of questions I had, and you already answered them uh, during the class, but one still remains. My question originally was, uh, is the soul, the Atma, also consistent, consists of Tattvas? But then I realized that no, because once you reach the Satya Loka or Sahasrara, I understood is the same, maybe, maybe not. Um, then no Tattvas exist anymore. So what is the soul? What is the component of the soul? Actually, when you reach the Sahasra Chakra, Tattvas have not so much power to disturb you to go to higher understanding or the higher consciousness. But does mean when you go to Sahasra, it's not necessarily you understand your, uh, the soul completely, no. But the Sahasra Chakra is a state of the consciousness helping you to understand the higher consciousness. But Sahasra, it means you actually, you are free from the Tattvas. But it must be clear, Atma is nothing to do with any tattvas. Like the sun, nothing to do with the clouds. But so far, clouds are there. How can you see the sun? Similar, I'm just giving you an example. So tattvas are like the clouds. Sun is the sun like Atma. When the clouds are removed, then you can see the Atma or the soul. So therefore, you have to clarify a lot of things before you are ex fully experience your Atma. So tattvas are like a clouds and you are removed all clouds, all tattvas, even tanmatras, karmendriyas, gyanendriyas, samskaras, karmas, all are like black clouds before you can reach to the sun. If there are black clouds, behind the sun or above the sun, how you can see the sun? So the clouds are covering the sun. So this is the one thing. Is it your, uh, the right? Did you got it, the answer? Or yes. not exactly? Yes, I'm thinking, I'm thinking more. Then I'm thinking a little bit why to meditate on tattvas if you have to go away from them. But I think that's why you have to meditate upon them so that you go, you you know it and you live it. Maybe it's connected to how all exactly. example of yoga nidra, you know it and you live it, you know it and you live it. Maybe then it works like that. Um, Okay, so Sylvia. Uh, Sylvia. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, so my question is also about five elements. Uh, yesterday you said that uh, water element doesn't mean actual water, the one we drink, the one that is raining. It's more like a symbol, yeah? So then can we mm -hmm. say that um, five elements are basically five different types of energy that have different, um, how to say, amplitude, different kind of vibrations. Can we say that? Is that the idea? Yes, you can elements? say different. You can say the five elements are also different energy, like five pranas, also energy. They matter. Mm -hmm. It is energy. It is a matter. Because without these elements, your body not survive. You will die. So it is a part of energy to make you to survive. So it is energy. It is a state of the consciousness. It is a state of the energy. But still the matter, the five elements. When the fire elements, when you die, where this fire, fire element gone? It is more to the totality of the fire elements. That is called Mahat. Mm -hmm. Like water okay. element is more than water elements and air element. When you die, when you die, where these five elements are gone? When you die and put people putting the cremating place and you cremate it, where these elements are gone? Because these elements they go to their source of the elements and they merge 
with the math elements math means the total it the element of the water so it is a part of mm -hmm. energy mm -hmm. like and each element planets. is related to one chakra yeah yes each chakra be like a earth element is related to muladhara chakra water element related swadeshan chakra mm -hmm. so each elements of the each chakras until five so five elements related to five chakras mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thank you but and it must be clear five elements working the whole creations whole creations so therefore your body is also part of the creations and whatever happening in the nature that everything happening within yourself also as well you understand whatever mm -hmm. happening in the nature it is also happening in self and when happening everything changing in the nature everything changes with yourself but the problem is we don't accept the law of nature then we facing all kind of suffering and miseries and if you understand the law of nature so naturally you can understand yourself and there is no problems there are no sufferings no stress only liberation 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 mm. now silvia <clears throat> i am digesting and observing and uh, integrating. So at this point, I have no question. Okay. <laughs> okay, so thanks for today, all of you. So anything like Yoganan say something? No. Okay. <laughs> Linus, final question for you, chance. No question. Om Namah Shivaya. <laughs> okay. Shivaya. So Jenny, Jenny got it. Jenny, after class finish, you will write me. I have forget this. I have this course in my brain, you know. <laughs> Jenny writes sometimes. <laughs> so I always say, please ask me in the class. And she need to share the questions what she think for other panelists. It could be nice, you know. Everyone is mm -hmm. nice to see something here. So therefore, I bring to the, this platform. Right? It's nice to say it professionally. So, because everyone is almost the teachers. Simon also teachers, Yoga teacher, Sylvia also, Jenny also, Yoganam, Linus. And everyone is the teacher are here, except me. I'm a student, only to learn from you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Om Namah Sivaya Gurave Satchidananda Murtai Nisprapanchaya Santaya Niralambaya Tejasi Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu Loka Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu so everyone try to unmute and chant with me Lokaha Samasta Sukhino Bhavantu. Try if it can be okay. Please unmute yourself, everyone, and chant with me all together. Lokaha Samasta.